Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Minwi Maitri. Yeah, so I'm going to riff a little bit on Unsan again. A few weeks ago, uh, ah, maybe a month ago, he gave a Dharma talk and it was more inspiration for me. Um, so I'm going to delve a little more deeply into something he did. But first, I want to ask you, just thinking out loud, and, and I ask you guys to bear with me today because this is going to be a little fun. All right, I'm going to share a, a PowerPoint slide with you. It will probably not make the YouTube highlights list, okay? Um, but I'm going somewhere with this. Uh, so I want you to think. When you think of Christopher Welkin, the actor, what do you think of? Anybody? I have no idea who that is. Oh, well, I'll tell you what I think of when I think of Christopher Welkin. <laughs> More cowbell. It's More a Saturday cow Night Live skit from years ago. And uh, he did several, actually, riffing on more cowbell. Uh, because, you know, there can always be more cowbell. So I may title uh, my Dharma talk today, More Cowbell. But it's going to go like this, folks. I'm going to give you three words. And I want you to think of a hundred different ways you can say whatever those three words are. And I don't want you to say them out loud. Just think to yourself. Scripture. Mind. Heart. Now you could put those three three words. I guess the total number of combinations would be like three cubed or something, right? I, the total number of combinations you could put those in. That. But what I want to talk about today, riffing on Unsan, is the Xing Xing Men. Why the Xing Xing Ming? Well, I was reading some of the Xing Xing Ming the other day. And then I thought to myself, I wonder what that other guy had to tra translated the exact same thing. And then I got to another one. I said, well, I wonder what this guy translated the Xing Xing Ming to say. And I started coming across dozens. I don't mean three or four, I mean literally dozens of translations of the Xing Xing Ming. And hopefully you guys can see my PowerPoint slide that just popped up here. Uh, good, Kevin gave me a thumbs up, so I appreciate it. Now, if I can see it, then it'll be okay. All right, so the Xing Xing Ming is three characters there. And the first two are pronounced the same in English anyway, Xing Xing Ming. And boy, what a story of how many ways you can translate this. And I'm only going to spend like the first three or four minutes talking about the title itself. Because I picked one of my, not my favorite, but I picked one of my favorite stanzas out of the poem. And I started digging as to how many different, oh, let's see. Oh, I went too far. Let me go back. Sorry, folks. Oh, no, no that's all right. I, I don't need to do that. So what's in the name of the Xing Xing Ming? Hopefully you guys can see this. And uh, you see, this is just how they translate the title. Inscribed on the believing mind. Song of the trusting mind. Verses on the faith mind. Inscription on faith in purity of mind. Poem on faith in mind. Sincerity mind inscription. 
faith in mind, on trust in the heart, inscribed on the believing mind, inscription on the faith in mind, on faith in mind. There's more. Inscription on trust in the mind. Have faith in your mind. The mind of absolute trust. Gata of Sing Sun. Affirming faith in mind. Trusting in mind. Faith in mind. Have faith in your mind. A song of enlightenment. Trust in mind. Inscription on faith in mind. Verses on the faith mind. Confidence inscription. That's one of my favorites, and we'll get to why later. So this is just the title. Just the title. Three Chinese characters. And I found in like 15 minutes on the internet, 23 different ways that people have translated just these three little Chinese characters. It's ridiculous because, again, when I think of Christo Christopher Welkin, I just think of more cowbell, plain and simple. There's not that many ways in English to say more cowbell. Now, granted, if I spoke enough German, then maybe I might have three or four ways of saying more cowbell, but probably not as many ways as I can find that they translate Xing Xing Ming. So this is supposed to be a picture of uh, Sing San. Uh, now the guy died in 606 of the Common Era, so uh, I'm not sure anybody really knows what he looks like, but in a book of Chinese patriarchs, this was uh, the rendition that they gave for uh, good old Sing San. Um, but I decided I wanted to look at, like I said, one of my favorite verses and uh so let's see if i can get my screen to go to it here we go so i'm going to ask you just think into your head a little bit and i'll probably hit what you, one of your favorite translators here in a moment but do you have a favorite translator when in general when i read things that have been translated from chinese old chinese mostly Zen or Taoist stories. I like David Hinton, and I, I have reasons why I like David Hinton. Uh, he doesn't necessarily have the most flowing text. He doesn't necessarily have the most um, accepted text. But at least when he's translating, he tells me why he translates something the way he did. And he usually gets into the uh, etymology of the word of the Chinese pictograph. And so I like that. I, I find it helpful that I'm like, oh, well, that's what that part of that character means. And that's what the other one looks like. So, okay, I get it. I see why he translated it that way. Sometimes we get translators, though, and they don't even tell us what they're translating. They just give you the translation and you just, oh, okay. I, it reads pretty well. I like that. Um, I can't compare it to the original. Uh, I can't look and see what word they're using for which character, but it's okay. I, I kind of like it. So, again, I don't know if any of you have a favorite translator of the Xing Xing Ming. Um, maybe it's uh, Waller. Maybe it is uh, Richard Clark. Um, Xin Yang. Uh, I don't know. I. Let me see if I switch pages here. Maybe you have um, D.T. Suzuki. This is an old book of his. He wrote this book back in the 40s, I think. Uh, the Manual of Zen Buddhism. But here's how he translated these four lines. So this is the fourth through the seventh line that I've decided I wanted to translate. Not translate personally, but look at because the fourth through the seventh, uh, each line in the in the uh, Xin Qing Ming uh, is only four characters. So it's a this poem is 146 lines long, 
of four characters for each line. Usually when it's written down, it has four characters and four characters to make one verse. Okay, so it's like eight characters and then eight characters, you get two total verses out of it, but it's just a total of four total lines from his poem. So out of, I don't know, you do the math, 146 lines, four characters each, that's like 584, I think, if my math is right, 584 characters, of which many of them are repeated. So uh, there's not even that many different characters. But so I wanted to look at this one because this is one of my favorites. And this is how DT Suzuki translated it. And he gives you the text. So you see how he takes four characters and turns them in on the first line. He turns it into seven English words. If you want to see it manifest. And then he takes four characters and he turns that into take no thought either for or against it. That's only four Chinese characters, remember. And now he does even better. Four more Chinese characters. To set up what you like against what you dislike. And then he gets a little more concise, the last four characters. This is the disease of the mind. Four characters in Chinese turned into, wow, seven characters on the second line uh eight nine ten is that ten on the third line all just from four characters it reminds me of a little exercise we were doing briar sent out i don't know a month or two ago uh about a poem by, by a japanese um zen master slash sword instructor who now is the name of a radish um but he gave a eight character writing to a guy and uh, and we were all trying to translate it. What could these four, eight characters possibly be? Now, none of us could come up with just eight characters, hardly. It was impossible. And that's what we face with the Xing Xing Ming. But it gets pretty good, folks. Some of these are great, and some of these are like totally off the wall. So we move on from DT Suzuki, and I go to Richard Clark. Richard Clark is probably, I don't know, if you have the Xing Xing Ming at home, you might have a copy of this one. Uh, either this one or Waller are probably two of the most famous copies. So the, the book you see, you see there um, was translated by Richard Clark. And uh, you see he's a little more uh, concise in his translations. And this is this one and the next one of Richard Clark. I'll just go ahead and skip to that one there. So Richard Clark has given two different translations of the same verses of the same eight characters. Uh, I mean, in this regard, it'd be, yeah, 16 characters total. Um, and so you see, let's we can go and do it line by line very easily here. If you wish to see the truth, then hold no opinion for or against. The struggle of likes and dislikes is the disease of the mind. That's pretty concise, much more concise than B.T. Suzuki gave us. Um, but you see, when he was translating that, he had a Chinese uh, editor with him who helped him. When he was translating it on his own uh, without the Chinese editor, and this is what's in my book, that white book you see on the right side here. If you wish to know the truth, then hold on, then hold to no opinions for or against anything. To set up what you like against what you dislike is the disease of the mind. So the same guy gave us two different translations of the same 16 characters. How do you know which translation is right? How do you know, how do you decide which one you can like, which one you can read and trust? The odd thing is Zen monks in China memorize these 584 characters this is a it's a it's a very common thing um even better than uh, uh than memorizing our limericks that we might print in our bodhi day slam um they memorize 584 characters and they don't have 
79 translations of it, but we do in English. And it makes it very difficult sometimes to decide which one do we really like. So here's Waller. Maybe you own this book. Maybe you own this version of the Xing Xing Ming. And so Waller says, if you want to experience the truth, then hold no judgments for or against anything. Attraction and aversion are afflictions of the mind. And then Thomas Cleary translates it this way, and you're like, what is this guy coming up with? If you want it to be manifest, if you want it to be manifest, don't maintain accord or opposition. If you don't know the mystic essence, you toil in vain. You, is that toil? You toil in vain at meditating on quiet. What? So I, I, I got a Thomas Cleary book. I, I have several Thomas Cleary books. And I always thought, oh, wow, he writes so well in English. No, I, actually, this English right here from this translation is almost unintelligible. And if he thinks he's translating it from Chinese, it's not even in the same ballpark of what some of these other translators are writing. So I scratch my head and I'm like, if the only exposure I had to the Xinxing Ming was Thomas Cleary, I wouldn't have it, I wouldn't have a single idea what was what he was even talking about. Don't main a don't maintain a court or opposition. All right, I can probably figure this out. But if you don't know the mystic essence, come on. All right, so let's move on. Hinton. So I told you David Hinton is one of my favorite because he walks you through and tells you why he he uses the etymology of the words to talk about it. But even this one, you can understand, but it's not very poetic sounding, right? So David Hinton, right? To face Tao's shimmering way, simply give up like and dislike. For battling, is that say battling? My, my screen is really small. I'm on my laptop. Uh, for battling things you dislike is mind's great disease. So we see a common thread here. Don't like or dislike. When you do, it's mind's great disease, right? So we get this thread of, of uh, neither attachment nor aversion. We get this equanimity thread, non-duality thread that goes through all the translations except for maybe Cleary, which is clearly not Cleary. Um, but looking at the text, they get different ideas of what the words mean. And so you see Hinton there is clearly talking about the, the to face Tao's shimmering way. Nobody else threw anything about Tao or the shimmering way in there. Um, so we get all kinds of different translations. I'm not going to go through all 100 of them, but here's another few that you see on here. Some of them are, are quite... Uh, uh, I don't know, I, I'd say famous translations. Uh, Whaley here is a famous translation. It's been around since the 50s. Um, and you can see, if you want the truth to stand clear before you, never be for or against. The struggle between for and against is mind's worst disease. Nobody else said worst. Where did he get worst? Right? Um, I, I don't even think anybody else said clear before you. So, you get, again, you get the concept, you get what they're trying to do, and I know a translator, they're trying to not just give you a rote translation word by word by word, they're trying to, you know, make it into intelligible English language that flows like a poem, like Sing San actually wrote, he wrote this as a poem, um, and it's not one of these 13 syllable poems with only two vowels that Robert promises us he's going to give us from the Polish uh, tradition. But it, it is four characters, which in Chinese, each character only has one sound, one syllable, right? So xing, xing, ming being three characters, three syllables, right? So you can see out of 584 characters. There's only 584 uh, syllables in the whole poem. And yet we get things that 
in some regards are just not even intelligible. If you want to get hold of what it looks like, do not be anti or pro anything. The conflict of longing and loathing, this is the disease of the mind. That's the first time we've seen anything about longing and loathing, right? Um, let me just throw a couple of more on here. Uh, Watson. Watson's another famous translator. You may have seen some of his stuff. So this book, Entering the Stream, uh, Watson was a contributor to that. So we'll just look at his. If you want the right, if you want the way right here before you, have nothing to do with assent or dissent, where acceptance and rejection vie for mastery. This is sickness to the mind. So this guy is famous for his translations. And how different is that from Richard Clark or D.T. Suzuki, uh, Waller? Uh, David Hinton, they're, they're all so different. So how do you choose? I mean, unless you read Chinese, and I don't, how do you choose? So Shi Shengling here, Shi Shengling wrote, if you want mind to manifest itself, be neither for nor against a thing, for this is contention, a disease that affects the mind. Something to think about. I'll let you take a look at these. I'm not going to read them all to you. But you see how different so many of these translators can get. One of them on here is uh, uh, Hei Quing. He styles himself as a Zen master. Uh, and so you you find his book and he calls himself Zen Master Hei Quing. Um, the Shuyun Order, the Portland Zen, they all have their little manuscripts or texts that they chant from. You get different ideas. And even more. And none of them are the same. None of them are the same. Now, in a second, we're, I'm going to ask you if you have a favorite of your own, and I hope you will respond. But here's... If I can get my screen to advance. Here. Okay. So here are the 16 characters again. And I love this translation. Not because it's a good translation. Because it teaches you what not to do. If you want to gain something, don't be obedient. Disobedience and fighting are caused by heart disease. <laughs> Google Translate. <laughs> so probably when you are attempting to translate scripture, poems, sutras from a Chinese writer, Google Translate is probably not going to be the one to help you out. But we had lots of choices there. All of them telling us what the whole Xing Xing Ming says. What is Xing Xing Ming? The last two lines of it, no matter what translation you say, you read, basically says, faith in mind is non-dualism. Non-dualism is faith in mind. Non-dualism is the Xing Xing Ming. The Xing Xing Ming is non-dualism. That's the whole poem. All right. He 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 translate. I mean, uh, Sing San puts that very clearly on the very, on the very last stanza of his poem. And yet, trying to milk out of, I and I took twenty three there, twenty three different translations, and try to milk out of it what Sing San was trying to say, seems impossible at times. How do you do it? Anybody? I'll mute my mic if we get it feedback. But how how do you pick a favorite translator? Because I think all of us have one. I told you guys early. David Hinton is mine, not because he had the most beautiful translation of the uh, Xin Qing Ming, um, but I appreciate when he says, "You see this character here? 
That's the symbol they use for Tao. And that's in the lower bottom corner of this pictograph or this character they use. And so when he says things like that and it points out to me, then I like that, you know? So what he, what we call faith in mind inscription, whatever, he called it sincerity mind inscription. Um, and he tells you why he uses the word sincerity as the instead of faith. Um, anybody have a favorite? Waller, Clark, there, Unsan has a favorite. Of course. Richard Clark is my go-to. It makes, to me, it makes sense. The way he puts things, the way it flows, gets the point across, he doesn't stray into weirdness. You know, there's no wisdom of the Tao manifesting through the shimmer of essence and, you know, all that. And believe me, I went through this exercise. I even tried comparing them like I was trying to get columns on a page to line up. And it was just, it was impossible. It was among the more ridiculous things I've ever attempted. But Musang did the same thing. I don't know if you've seen that book, but he has all the translations in the back of it. It's like his bit is like this the translations at the end are like that and it's great and that's it thank you <laughs> uh just to throw in the um there's a monkey mind article by james ford where he doesn't line them up one by one but if you want to look at a bunch of translations he has 20 english translations linked in a row so you can just click on them and they open in a new page i'm going to take that uh link and just throw it in the chat if anybody wants to browse around at a few different translations. From my quick uh, survey, uh, I mean, I think I like the Richard Clark too, but basically there are a few translations, unlike Cleary, who was clearly on LSD or out of his mind at the time, um, who, you know, they, they translate it pretty straightforward. You know, if you want to see the great way, don't, ha don't hold on to your opinions, you know, like and dislike, you know, will cause conflict and you don't want to do that. So if it's something along those lines, it seems like it's pretty accurate, right? The other ones that go haywire um, don't seem to be as useful. I've done a similar exercise with a number of different things. Um, you know, some, some of my favorites and I, I think it depends what I'm doing with them, if that makes sense. There are some that I prefer for, and here we're picking and choosing, so, you know, sorry. Um, there are some I prefer for trying to teach or explain concepts. There are others that flow better if you're chanting. And so I, it tends to be the, what what's what's the effort? But yeah, I, it's a fascinating exercise that I'm, as you mentioned, that's how I got curious about that poem. I'm always looking at all these things and saying, well, how the hell did you get that? And I do the same thing with native languages, what people translate. And it's it's funny. Um, Minway, I can't help but see the irony in what you just read and talking about the, the likes and the dislikes of the different interpretations. And yet, here we are talking about the likes and dislikes of interpretation. Thank you for your teaching. Hey, Kevin, I like that a lot. And I, and I think there's a good point that you're raising there about making likes and dislikes of translations. Um, except what got me on this, this time, was I was reading a commentary on the Xing Xing Ming. Uh, and... So 500 years after Tsing Tsan had died, the first commentary was written on faith, mind, inscription, whatever name you want to give it, by a Chan master, Qing Liao. And I was reading his commentary, which had been translated by Thomas Cleary. And at the beginning of the commentary, Thomas Cleary had translated the Xing Xing Ming. 
I was like, I'm familiar with Richard Clark's version of the Shi Qingming. That's the version that I had learned from the beginning. I mean, that's probably the first version of it I had ever read. Um, and now I'm trying to figure out, well, what does the commentary mean if I can't even understand what the translator means? So I, I don't disagree with you. It's to me, it's it's the message. And like I said, I, I chose the message like and dislike, and I need to end this. I'm sorry. Uh, I, cho I chose the message like and dislike because uh, that's the message that you're conveying. And that's the message I like from the whole thing. Um, but when I spend my money to buy a book, I want to trust that what they're telling me is what was written. And, uh, and, and that's, that's why as a consumer, I want to know what I'm getting is actually teaching me what was intended to be taught. Uh, and I think we all come to conclusions on how we feel about what we're being taught from ancient worthies. Um, the truth is, none of them are going to enlighten us. You're only going to enlighten yourself. But if you read something that might. But uh, I just, again, this was meant to be uh, somewhat tongue in cheek. This was meant to be fun for you guys to see. Don't go to Google. Google will just give you heart disease. Um, find a good translator you like and see if you can uh, appreciate the words that are written.